mission of the George Institute is to improve the lives of millions of people worldwide, particularly underserved populations, through innovative approaches to research uh, and translation of that research. The George Institute is committed to achieving health equity for everyone, and sex and gender um, equity is an important component of that. The sex and gender work at the George Institute encompasses research, uh, education and capacity building, and translation work as well, particularly our policy work in this space. We work with a range of stakeholders, researchers and academics, communities and people with lived experience, with healthcare providers and the business community. In 2018, that led to a group of us developing a policy paper with the University of Oxford that focused on a new global agenda for women's health. That policy paper had two focuses to it. One which was about we need to really think about women's health across the life course and not just focus on maternal, sexual and reproductive health, even though that's important. The second focus was saying if we're going to start to look more broadly at women's health, at the leading causes of death and disability for women, then understanding how those conditions differ for men and women was really crucial to be able to identify what might be better ways of prevention and better ways of management of those conditions. Much of what we know about health and medicine has been derived from studies that have primarily included male cells, male animals and male humans. And indeed, arguably, it's middle-aged white men who have been the standard. Assumptions from that have been generalised to women for people with variations in sex characteristics or intersex people to gender diverse people. Not only is it not good science, but it means that the care that we provide, the prevention strategies that we provide, treatment guidelines, our diagnostic tools, medicines that we use, medical devices, um, surgical procedures, are not appropriate and arguably cause harm to those other individuals. We're very aware that health is not sex and gender neutral and that by understanding the roles of both sex and gender in health, we have the opportunity to provide better preventive interventions um, and treatment options for the whole population. We know there are biological characteristics that are important in health. For example, there's presentation of symptoms for a heart attack differ from men and women, and they are biological differences between male and female sex. But we also know that the way in which care following a heart attack can differ for men and women is based on how healthcare providers perceive those individuals and the care differs based on their gender. One of the biggest issues that I think we face is improving health literacy. And that's health literacy for patients, consumers, community organisations. We've then also got to improve health literacy amongst our healthcare providers. So where to from here? I think first step we need to make sure that women, that intersex and gender diverse people are included in research. But then we need to learn to disaggregate that data separately for men and women and to also look at data separately for intersex people and gender diverse people. We need that information if we're then going to translate our research findings into prevention strategies and treatment strategies. We've found that 
undertaking research and showing that there are sex and gender difference in particular conditions only goes so far in changing practice. So one of the things that we've been doing over the last few years is looking at how do we change policy as another mechanism to actually change practice. So working with government, working with researchers, working really across the spectrum to develop policies that could potentially change behaviour. So a major focus of our policy work in Australia has been working with researchers, so a bottom-up approach for researchers to say we want to do the best research possible. So how do we develop policies amongst our research organisations to ensure that the research we do uh, takes a sex and gender approach? That also requires working with the major research funders to look at them developing policies to ensure that sex and gender is integrated in research. Our work in the UK involves working with all the major research funders so that they would also develop policies to ensure that sex and gender is integrated into health and medical research. But then it goes further than that, of course. One of the things we've been talking to colleagues about in the health sector is how do we look at designing, developing new guidelines that incorporate sex and gender considerations? We've been talking with colleagues who are involved in ethics, designing research that integrates sex and gender considerations is not only sound science, but leads to better health outcomes for all.